Welcome back, everyone. We've officially reached the last stop in our European beer tour. This week, we are in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. This beautiful town is known for their complex canal systems, their narrow houses, and their rich and unique culture. Now, what do I mean by unique culture? Well, I'm glad you asked. Most tourists come to Amsterdam for their open acceptance of marijuana and other recreational drugs. Prostitution in the red light district, ooh la la. And some people like David and myself actually enjoy the art museums. Their Stedelijk has some of the best in the world. There's also nothing quite like seeing an alien in a raincoat after eating a space cake. Amsterdam has fully embraced that which the West deems as taboo, and that also includes their beer culture, which we're about to get into right now. So if you're ready, let's get started. What's going on, beer lovers, and welcome to another episode. Today, David and I are actually in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and we're here to visit Bruisch Eich. This is a big name brewery here in Amsterdam. Apparently, their beers are everywhere, and this location actually used to be a bathhouse here in Amsterdam, and it's been converted since then. We are super excited to try their beers. We've been waiting a while, so if you're ready, let's, let's have, have some, some beer. beer. Bruisch I was started in the 1980s by a man named Casper Peterson. He was a famous musician, and using the money he made from doing that, he decided to start this brewery. Years later, he passed on ownership to his close friend and fellow beer lover, Patrick Hendricks. Now, since taking over, Patrick has expanded the brewery and even built a lab to ensure that they are making more consistent and quality beers. Now I am freezing my ass off and this beer looks delicious, so let's get drinking. All right, so my first beer up is going to be Flink. Now this is a 4.7% pale ale. Uh, it's meant to be extremely light and super sessionable, something that you can drink and really enjoy. Now, it uses Galaxy and Mosaic hops, which are two of my favorite hop varieties, so can't wait to try it. Cheers. Uh, wow, it's, it's just super, super light. Um, to be honest, it's very chilly outside, and this is very cold. Uh, it doesn't have an opportunity to really bouquet those hops in this kind of weather. Um, I think if it was warmer, I would get more out of it. But as it is, this is something that goes down like water. It is super, super light. You do get a hint of the galaxy for me. I get a little bit of dankness uh, on the mouthfeel. Uh, the finish is super dry. The hops are just kind of chilling in the background, but they dissipate quite fast. Uh, all in all, pretty decent beer. All right, so the next one we have on the list is the Nate. It is a Belgian double, six and a half percent. So let's give it a shot. It's got a nice malty start. Um, when you, when I drink malty beers, sometimes they can be overpowering, but it gives you that nice malty like uh, presence at the very beginning, and then it kind of mellows out. So it is pretty easy to drink. Uh, I would say at six and a half percent, it tastes more like it would be running to five and a half percent. So you can drink it pretty easily. Um, I really like the the lingering uh, flavor at the very end of it because it doesn't just die down too quickly. Some beers are like malty at the beginning, dead at the end. But this one, it's like tapered off maltiness that kind of lingers in the back of your mouth. So yeah, I would say it's a really good beer. All right, so I'm drinking the Trapel. This is called Zate. It's 8% and uh, the glass is literally sticking to my fingers. Uh, so you can tell it's quite sugary. It's the first beer that they ever brewed as a brewery in 1985. 
Uh, that was the year I was born, so that's pretty crazy that this beer is as old as I am. Uh, yeah, let's get in. Cheers. Oh, you know, something that this brewery is doing right is creating super sessionable beers. Everything tastes like it's four or five percent. It's so easy to drink. It's got to be the cold weather because this thing is just super, super chill. Like literally chill. <laughs> um, I get nice, rich fruit. Um, the malts are nice and light, but they're not like missing and they're not overpowering either. Um, again, I just can't believe that this is 8% because it's not drinking like 8%. This is drinking like I could chug this, like literally chug this. So the next one we have is Ewit. Ewit is a full-bodied wheat beer at 6.5%, which is, I would say, a common theme among these beers, between around 6 percentage, 6 to 6.5. So let's give it a shot. Because wheat beers, you generally see at 5.5%. So immediately what comes to mind is you do get a really nice kick of lemon and coriander. Um, the lemon itself isn't overpowering. Sometimes you, you see that strong lemon and you can't taste anything else. Or they try to overcome it by overdoing the hops on this. But it isn't. Uh, the lemon is really nice, like nicely balanced and then you get that coriander kind of finishing at the very end of the initial tasting of it. Uh, it goes down smooth. Uh, I really like it. I would say, actually think I like this more than the natte that I reviewed earlier for you. So, cheers. Well, as fast as we started, we are reaching the end of all the beers. This is called Columbus. This is an amber ale and it's at 9%. So all the other ones were a little bit lighter. That uh, Trapel that I had was 8%. 8 this is nine. Uh, I'm hoping that means I get some more robust flavor out of it. Although I do like those sessionable beers, I also like my super flavorful ones. So let's dig in. Oh yeah. Th this has got a fantastic hop profile to it. You taste it from beginning to end. It actually lingers on the palate a little bit as well. But man, it mixes so well with these amber malts. It's it's just so flavorful. Um, I will tell you, ice cold beer in ice cold weather don't necessarily mix. <laughs> I really want to go inside to the actual bar and warm up and let my beers warm up. I feel like maybe they will taste a little bit different. And even if they don't, I'll probably just start pounding them. Let's be honest. Uh, but regardless, uh, Columbus was definitely a winner. After finishing our flight, David and I were freezing cold, so we decided to go inside with everyone else and get warm. Little did we know that the alcohol would finally start kicking in just as we decided to order more beer. Now, if you've ever had that happen to you, please let me know in the comments so I don't feel so alone in this situation. Anyways, at this point, David and I were having a grand old time and decided that we had a couple more beer reviews left in us, so I hope you're ready. Guys, I know I said that we were done reviewing beers, but they had a couple others inside in bottles and we had to review them. The beer I'm drinking right here is called Strice. This is a 9% barley wine, and uh, shout out to Jacob. Sorry you're not here in Amsterdam with us, but you know, barley wine is life, right? A 9% beer sounds awesome. They have super sessionable beers, but something tells me this is not gonna be so sessionable, so let's give it a try. There we go. That's that angry, malty <laughs> burst of bold flavor that I was looking for. Uh, I would say at the end of the day, this is probably my favorite beer. Simply because it's just, well, you know you're getting drunk while you're drinking it. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. 
Uh, David and I were drinking all the other beers. They tasted so light, so sessionable, but we actually got buzzed off of them. But you couldn't tell because they were so light and so sessionable. This tells you that you're drinking a 9% beer. I gotta say, I prefer that. I prefer that because a 7% beer that tastes like it's like 4 or 5% would kill you. So here we got the IPA for Browry Eye. It is a 7% IPA. At a 7%, it tastes more like a sessionable, four and a half to five and a half percent IPA. Um, so it goes down really easy. Uh, it's not too bitter. Not a whole lot of aroma on it, but the flavor kind of drives down all the way down mouth, bullet, everything. So it's got pretty good flavor. It's not like super strong. It's like a mellow, nice and easy, just all the way through the back of the mouth flavor. I would say all in all, 7%. This is a uh, really smooth IPA. Uh, yeah, this could be dangerous if you want to just chug beer. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it here at Brorish Ay. Um, this was a really interesting brewery. I do wish we could have taken a tour, to be honest. They're only open six hours, and I guess we showed up too late to take a tour. If you guys wanna look at how beer is made, you can watch any of our other episodes, to be honest. Uh, it's all kind of the same thing. And they did say that they have an off-site brewery, so you probably wouldn't see it here. Most of the beers that I had today were not super impressive, but they were sessionable, and both of us, well, at least I'm pretty buzzed. No, I am too, I am too. Okay. So if you're coming to Amsterdam and you wanna visit a brewery, this is definitely a brewery to visit. Just keep in mind, it's not gonna compete with some of the bigger craft beer guys out there, uh, however, you will get drunk off a beer that tastes like water. And when you look at all the beers that we are getting on this tour, uh, most of the beers, even in the brewery itself, is around four to four and a half euros. But they charge around three to three and a half euros. So you're actually getting a really good deal. And it's only about a mile from the red light district. So it is really close. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. If you haven't already, click that bell icon, make sure you get notifications for the next episode that comes out. This is the last one from our European tour, but I'm glad you guys watched it. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time on Let's, Let's Have, have some, some Beer. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider visiting our website and ordering one of our shirts to show your support for the channel. The information is in the description below. See you next week.